Oh my, exciting times. It's finally here, the iPhone SE for 2020, the hotly anticipated device you've been following along. You can't wait to see it. You're the type of customer that's been waiting for an affordable Apple device in 2020, and Apple has answered. They've come to you with an offering that's gonna give you all kinds of warm and fuzzy feelings because you're gonna have the nostalgia associated with a form factor that you're familiar with. On the inside of this form factor, you're gonna get something fresh. You're gonna get something new in the form of Apple's latest and greatest processing. The same type of processing found in far more expensive Apple devices, like the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, how can Apple do it? How can they deliver that type of horsepower at this particular price point? And to be fair, I'm not quite certain. But one thing I can say is that this device is going to be the answer for a lot of people that have held on to their old Apple devices, iPhone 6 and 6s, iPhone 7s and 8s, and they loved those form factors. This device is for people who aren't even considering the Android universe, who are happy on iOS who want to continue to use their favorite applications, including iMessage. That's who this phone is for. And now that you've got all this new horsepower in an old form factor, even though the hardware might be dated, certain things get an improvement just through the processing potential. Things like the camera, which can now use the computational aspect of the new chip to improve performance substantially. So in front of us here today, I have the white version of the iPhone SE for 2020. I will peel the package and my goodness, doesn't Apple do the unboxing experience so well? You've got the phone displayed on the front. The lid just comes off so perfectly. Would you look at that? designed by Apple in California, as well as our SIM tool, and you can't forget the Apple stickers. And next we are greeted by the device, and like I said, what a familiar form factor and a comfortable form factor for single-handed usage. You can see it is slightly altered from the iPhone 8 on which it is based. The Apple logo has moved down to the middle section now of the device. Now, as you glance at the front of the device, you'll see this fingerprint scanner down at the bottom. This, of course, is Touch ID, and Touch ID has not been available to users on those more expensive flagship devices from Apple. So in a weird way, this SE for 2020, some might say it even has a leg up on those far more expensive devices. And of course, it's all personal preference, but a fingerprint scanner is a convenient thing to have. It's a convenient thing on most days, but it's also incredibly convenient right now, given the state of the world and the fact that people are covering their faces. Your Apple power brick, incredibly portable, tiny, easy to carry with you. Next up, they've included their ear pods. These of course are the wired version of their in-ear headset with the microphone included and a lightning connector on the bottom. And then lastly is your USB to lightning cable. Look at the theme, it all flows together. White, white, the entire clean white package. So what's the defining characteristic of the iPhone SE in 2020? Is it the, the clean lines, the clean design? Is it the comfortable hold in one hand? when compared to the wide variety of flagship smartphones that have continued to increase in scale? Is it the nostalgic feeling for people who didn't have a problem with their previous generation iPhone, in fact, maybe even liked them more than some of the stuff Apple has put out recently? No, I think the defining characteristic here is price. And Apple is going to be selling this for $399, offering people an opportunity to be in the modern Apple space in a modern iPhone experience at a commitment level that's lower than any level Apple has ever given you in the past. And they're putting this price out into the world at the perfect time. So therefore, I think price is a feature and I think it's a killer feature in the form of this particular device. And and that actually brings me 
to the sponsor of this particular episode, who's going to bring even greater value. Through Visible, you can purchase an iPhone SE for $384. Yes, even less than the proposition from Apple Direct. On top of that, Visible will provide a $200 prepaid MasterCard virtual account. That would bring the effective cost down to $184. Visible is a carrier providing a $40 a month unlimited talk, text, and data plan. It runs on Verizon's 4G LTE network. There's no contracts, no hidden fees, and it's only $25 for your first month of service. So if price is the killer feature on this particular phone, then that deal takes it to another level completely. We're greeted by the Apple logo. So here is the familiar Touch ID section of the setup process. And I remember when Touch ID first came out, enrolling my finger in one of the first fingerprint scanners that I've ever used on a smartphone. I really miss Touch ID. That is a thing that I hear some people say, I'm just not comfortable with strictly face unlock, or I miss the convenience of unlocking the device without ever tilting it towards my face. So I think there is a demand. There is an Apple customer out there who's looking for an upgrade path but maybe doesn't want to give up Touch ID on the device that they currently have. Now, they have a way to upgrade while maintaining their Touch ID. And just like that, we're into the iPhone. This is the interface that people appreciate. This is the interface that the Apple customer loves. The cohesiveness, the integration, or the ecosystem as it's often called. You've got FaceTime baked in for video conferencing. You've got iMessage which I hear about frequently from Apple fanatics. They say, I can't live without iMessage. And it is one of the best messaging apps on the planet. And it's a tremendously difficult application to find a substitute for when you consider the fact that your entire social graph in some cases is on that network already. You can pick up this device. Now you have an affordable option to stay within the ecosystem. You don't have to go to Android or wonder about some budget brand you haven't heard of before. You can keep your $399 in the Apple family, or I almost forgot, your $384 if you buy it through Visible. But the integration doesn't stop there. You can see the Apple TV app. There's AirPlay, of course. If you have other Apple devices already in your house, this is going to enable you best to take advantage of that variety of devices. Now, what about the camera? This is the area where most of the questions exist. People wondering how much of a camera's performance are inside of the computational side versus the actual camera hardware, the sensor and the lens. Now it is a single lens system, but that simplifies things. It makes your life easy. You don't have to pop open your camera application and make any decisions on what you wanna use. You just hit the shutter button and you snap a few photos and you just watch the brain go to work. The brain inside of your phone, that top of the line processor inside of a phone that's sub $400, doing all the fancy computational work to create fantastic images at an entry level price. They're vibrant and properly exposed. Video up to 4K 60. Okay, here's a video test, 4K 60 FPS. You'll be watching it back in 30 frames, but it's smooth and the autofocus adjusts, and the audio performance, you are hearing audio from the microphone on the camera. 4K60 takes tremendous horsepower. You're not shooting 4K60 on a phone from 2016. Now here's the other nice thing about going with a tried and tested form factor. When you launch into an application like YouTube, you don't have to deal with any bizarre obstructions in the frame, you get a perfect aspect ratio on the video itself. You have a nice place to grip. It seems strange to say, but increasingly with modern smartphones, it's become difficult to figure out how to hold them correctly, especially when screens dip around the edge of the device right up to the edge or even beyond it. Here you have a nice confident grip without obstructing your view of the video at all. And what about the speaker? You know, the only way to really analyze this thing, what could be the world's most expensive toaster, is to put it up against. It's not gonna blow you away, but this is a utilitarian decision. You need a fast phone with a good camera. You need a phone where you can install any modern application and it's gonna be able to handle it. And you know this can do it, 
because it has that top shelf processing. You might not care so much about this aggressive screen to body ratio. You might be fine with what you have already. Maybe smartphones have tried too hard, tried too hard to reinvent something that didn't need to be reinvented. You might be a user on one of those older iPhones that never saw a problem with it, that loved the single-handed functionality for typing. To be able to just quickly type something in with one hand, and no adjustment to your grip at all. To be able to reach across your screen without putting your second hand on the device. This is a thing that's become impossible to find in 2020. A true single-handed functionality smartphone. What about the person who's on the go, who frequently is using their other hand to carry something? Or someone who uses public transit and has to hold on to a post while interacting with their smartphone using their other hand. Maybe you just don't want a gigantic smartphone. And here's the other good part. Your old accessories or accessories made for previous generation iPhones still work. Here is the later case, the exact same part number that we use for the iPhone 7 and 8. And it clips on perfectly, giving you even more confidence in your grip on a phone that already gives you tremendous single-handed confidence. Maybe this is the iPhone for everyone. Maybe this is the best iPhone Apple makes, all things considered. When you put it all together and you think about what does a user really need? What do they really want? Do they want the stuff that the smartphone industry has been pumping out, churning out? Or do they want more of what they have? just tweaked or improved ever so slightly? And do they want it at the right price? Is cost the key consideration for most consumers in 2020? Do most consumers just have a smartphone which is slightly slowing down, which doesn't have the battery life that it once did? And they just wanna take that thing and pump it up all over again. They want the new version of that and they don't wanna go broke getting it. Maybe this iPhone is for them. Maybe this iPhone is for you. Are you the Apple user that's been hanging on to your old iPhone, an iPhone 6, 6S, 7, or even 8, and you just haven't felt compelled to upgrade to the stuff that Apple's been putting out at the flagship level? Or if those devices, iPhone 11 or even 10, if those devices were too cost prohibitive, or if you just felt you didn't need some of those features or want some of those features. Well, now Apple has an answer for you. They have an upgrade path for you. They have a price point, which is far more approachable. So if that user is you, then I think the time has finally come. The time to upgrade is now, and I think you should buy the iPhone SE.